Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today I'm going to be bringing you episode two of my newest Gray Man Theory. Hey, what's up? Yeah, just working. What, what's going on? No way. You got to be kidding me. Not again. Dang. All right. I'm going off grid then. I'll get... Now I've got a full Gray Man Theory playlist here on the channel, but things are changing. Times are changing. This is the modern world and the way things currently are, Gray Man. Now this is episode two. In episode one, I discussed what is not Gray Man, okay? And pretty much, in my opinion, all of the information out there on Gray Man Theory, apart from what I'm sharing, is wrong and very wrong. So wrong, in fact, that a lot of it, if you were to try to put it into play or into practice in an end of the world scenario in a zombie apocalypse, okay? Let's say in a natural disaster, looting, rioting, World War III, whatever you wanna say, and you're gonna try and use what a lot of these people are telling you that you should be using, I believe that it will get you killed. So what I'm sharing with you now is a really much more in-depth and 
philosophical approach to gray man theory, but it's also experience based and stuff that I've had to use to survive while being hunted and wanted. Okay, I've been I've been chased around the world by some of the top government organizations that are known for being very good at finding people and spent two years abroad seeking political asylum until I was able to get everything fixed. So a lot of you guys know my story. There's a full video here on the playlist, the Greg Tambone story. It's on AIM Country TV. It's on Apple TV. It's on a bunch of networks now have the full Greg Tambone story. If you guys want to check that out, be sure to be sure to check it out. But anyway, gray man theory. Okay. In video one, I told you everything. I talked about everything that everybody else is telling you that you need. All right, we had it all on the table, all the cool, tactical, awesome stuff, all that stuff that you really don't need and that's gonna get you hurt. And I talked about how to use it, if it's what you already have, so you don't have to just get rid of all your cool, tactical, tactical, cool gear, tactical gear. And we discussed that it's not gonna be like you're gonna be in the military, or you're not gonna be some sort of a special forces operator automatically if the SHTF, okay? What's really gonna happen is you're gonna be more like an insurgent, all right? So what I wanna share with you is what gray man theory actually is, okay? Not what everybody's telling you that it is, but what gray man theory actually is. Controlling how you present yourself and thereby how others perceive you, okay? So basically it's what you're giving off and you're changing the way that you act, the what you wear, everything about you that you can change and what you're able to change so that others have the perception of you that you want them to have of you, all right? So obviously you need to be aware of your limitations and your abilities first off, okay? So a lot of it is abilities and I'm gonna share with you what you can do. I'm not gonna necessarily sit here and brag and share with you what I can do because it's not gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna share with you the gear that anybody can use to keep you ahead and to get you ahead and the mindset behind it. And then it's up to you to study and practice. For starters, the gear is completely based on your mission and your area of operation. In layman's terms, that means the gear is based on what you're gonna be doing, what you need or what will help you as far as gear is concerned is based on what you're gonna be doing and where you're at. So if you're in a foreign country, you need to adapt your gray man theory to that foreign country. And you need to know something about that foreign country. If you're in your local town, it's going to be a lot more difficult to use gray man theory because there's a great possibility that people already know you. So if you were to have to go gray for some reason, it's usually recommended that you put some distance between you and those who already know you. If you're trying to give off a perception, then you want people to be let's say a blank or clean slate when they're interpreting you, because if they already know who you are, then you're not gonna be able to have them perceive you as something different than what they already know you to be. If you wanna learn more about the real gray man theory, then you're gonna to wanna to check out the full playlist here on the Bone Tactical channel. If you wanna learn about the philosophy and everything like that. But if what you're looking to do now is check out some of the gear that you can use, as far as being that gray man, what I've done is I've compiled some of the most common and effective equipment for non-permissive environments for the gray man role. Remember that it always has to do with your area of operation and your mission, right? It has to do with where you're gonna be and what you're gonna be doing. But this stuff, if I had to say what is the absolute most generalized that'll work anywhere in the world, that's what I've put together is a really basic minimum stuff that will work almost anywhere in the world and the absolute most effective gray man equipment in existence currently in 2022. Really amazing stuff here. So let's, let's just get right into it. Discussing first the actual what you're wearing on your body, all right? Your clothing. It's, your clothing is so many things. It becomes protection against the elements. So you naturally need to, generally speaking, unless you're trying to present the image or the, unless you wanna be perceived as a crazy person, you wanna have the correct clothing for the environment. 
I'll give you an example. In Italy, in high society, they dress not only by designer, not only by what's current and trending as far as the clothes and the type of clothing, but they even dress by color, by season. So if you're wearing a color that's out of season and you're there doing possibly counter espionage in very high circles, you need to know not only what Italian designer clothes you need to be wearing, you need to be, you need to know what type of time of year it is and what color patterns, colors and patterns coincide with that time of year. So like I said, knowledge at the beginning of your area of operation is so important. Don't just go willy nilly into the fray, let's say, but what we've got here is gonna work for 99% of you guys. And the, so the clothing is such a big deal. What I've got here is clothing, let's say this is a pair of jeans. Now jeans are very common in North America, even in Europe, but this is, this is a pair of jeans that will cover you pretty much all of North America and South America as well. Let's say North and South America, the Caribbean. Uh, this pair of jeans in particular, I like because of how plain it is. This is an Amazon Essentials athletic fit. So it allows me to do a lot of moving and shaking, but, uh, but it's very, very, very plain. What I'll show you here is in this case, and this particular area of operation is uh, Central America where being too flashy can be a danger. So what I've chosen here is a uniform color with the no fancy designs on the pockets here. We've got just normal stitching, normal pockets, very basic jeans. It doesn't have any markings on it. So what this could be is it could be any brand. It could be hand-me-down. It could be store-bought. Nobody really knows. So that allows me to do a lot with that jean. But it's also clean. They look good. So I can go anywhere in Central America from working in the streets, just put some dirt on there, maybe rub some grease on it, all the way up to being able to fit a high society even because the factor is that most of Central America is very poor. So you don't wanna go really crazy fancy clothing because nobody has really crazy fancy clothing. A clean new pair of jeans like that from Amazon could be the most elite, you could go into pretty much any elite circle and still get by. Even the president who crazy story is right now on his way to a US prison cell, the ex-president uh, used to wear jeans and a Columbia shirt. So that uh, that just goes to show the, the culture there. Um, your belt, okay, is something very important. You This one's from Core Essentials. Use code Bone Tactical for 10% off their website. They sent me this, but you can tell I actually use it. I use it quite a bit. It's coming apart a little bit and everything like that. But it's not coming apart to where it would be a structural or a performance issue. It's just some minor cosmetic damage because I carry a lot of heavy stuff like you need to be considering. A normal belt just will not do. This is very stiff, very rigid, very heavy duty. One of the cool things about the core system is that it has like a ratchet thing where it slides in and, and, and micro adjustments and just really cool. Then you come in there and you can pull it out, you know, whatever, but it's tough, it's strong. There's a couple set screws in the back here. Make sure that you really screw these down and then it's good, you're good to go. You can have a, it's very heavy load bearing, um, pretty great. It's not as heavy duty as a riggers belt, but it's, it, for gray man theory, it's much better because it even, I can have one that looks like I have a buckle. This one is a little bit military, a little bit more military than I generally like to go, but it's uh, in this case with the shirt, I'm wearing a shirt over it outside the pants. So it's not a big deal. They do make them with a buckle that looks even more just like a regular buckle. I would recommend getting that probably most overall if you weren't gonna be wearing your shirt untucked. The shirt is, like I said, it's also incredibly important. And this is the epitome of gray man theory right here. This shirt is the El Sicario shirt from Bone Tactical. And it's just an incredible technical shirt. It has 100% moisture wicking, polyester, but it's also ripstop. So it's gonna protect your skin against sun damage. It's gonna be very cool. It's moisture wicking. It's got the venting in here. So it's de specifically designed for hot environments, venting in the back. 
It's got a uh, cool Hawaiian accents, so it doesn't it doesn't look like super military or anything. It allows you to these Hawaiian accents you can completely cover up if you button up the shirt like this. Just normally, if you wear the shirt like you normally will, you don't see any of the Hawaiian. Then, if you want to change the way that you look to show the Hawaiian, you can roll up the sleeves, and then you're a, it's a whole nother look, a completely different look. Okay, you can wear it untucked, but the most important thing about it is the features. So it's got a feature in, it's got camouflage inside and it's a double layer. So what that does is it allows you to hide anything on your waistline and it doesn't print. This is double layer fabric. In an emergency situation, you can cut these two layers apart and then you have camouflage if you need to use camouflage. If you need to stash something, you can wrap the shirt in it and stash something in it. It's got stash pockets on the inside of the shirt where you can put money that will pass a pat down. Why will it pass a pat down? Because there's a pocket on the front side of the shirt too. And it just, when a pat down goes by, it just feels like it's the front pocket, but there's a double pocket in the back. There's little coin holders here where you can put coins or another stash. You can stash something in here that can pass a pat down as well because it's in the corner hem. But also if you use it for coins, it's for basically for quick draws. The shirt can be ripped open to access all of the stuff that's on your waistline. It has snaps on here, okay? But it's all incredibly well built, incredible stitching, all of the designer implementations like this little strip of floral here and the genuine pearl snaps on there, okay? Everything's just very high end, but also able to be blending into a huge amount of environments. And when I say blending, I'm not talking about gray man theory like everyone else tells you it is. I'm talking about this particular thing. You can be various different people depending on who I, if I have this rolled up, if I have it tucked, if I have it untucked, everything, this shirt can be adaptable. So what you want as far as a lot of times with your gray man gear is to have clothing that can change with you as you change or that can give you the ability to change the perception in style. One of the reasons that I wear these uh long sleeve versions of this. this is this is the hot what this is the cool cooler weather gear version here one of the reasons that i wear these is because i have tattoos okay and you guys watching this video you can see automatically right now how this changes so much just by rolling these sleeves up automatically now um completely different how i'm perceived as just having a normal black shirt on as to having this Hawaiian stuff here, okay? I have tattoos, so I wanna have the ability to cover them up. And in my case, another thing that I can do with one of these shirts is roll up the sleeves and show a little bit of tattoos, and then that can completely change people's perception of me as well. One example would be if I'm in a very dangerous area, then especially in Central America, tattoos are still looked at in a lot of countries as gang affiliation regardless and here where i'm at currently right now the having a tattoos even 10 years ago meant that you would be shot okay by the police just the police seeing you with a tattoo in certain areas anybody with a tattoo gets shot it was illegal and they were used primarily by ms13 and uh, a, another gang called 18th street gang that would uh would basically show off their tattoos. I mean, you guys know you've seen the whole, whole face tattoos and everything like that. Well, it got to the point in a lot of these countries down here in Central America where, and still to this day, those guys with those face tattoos that say MS-13 across their face and all that stuff, those guys can't leave their houses now because the, you can't be seen with those tattoos because now the police are in more control than they were. 20 years ago, the, uh, those guys ran everything and they were everywhere, okay? So times changed. Those guys that tattooed MS-13 on their faces thought that they didn't think about gray man theory and, the abil and they, they, they would have the ability, never have the ability to remove that from their face and now they literally cannot leave their houses. They're, that's why they were in a big rush trying to get into the States for a while because they, were, they, could, they couldn't be in their home country. They couldn't go out in public or have anyone see them with those tattoos. There's police will literally here where I'm at right now, kidnap gang members from their sector and sell them to the gangs of the other sector and just go back and forth when they, inst and, and they know that they'll get killed as soon as they get there. So instead of the police killing them now, they found a way to make money off of it 
And so they'll go over to the MS-13 zone and if, when they see somebody with an MS-13 tattoo, they'll kidnap them, sell them to the 18th Street guys. The 18th Street guys will kill them. So the cops don't even have to kill them and they're getting paid. They get paid based off of the rank of the soldier, uh, of the rank of the gang member. The more, the higher in the hierarchy of the gang, the more the police get paid for the kidnapping them. That This is an issue where tattoos come into play with gray man theory. So you want to think about being able to have a long sleeve shirt. So when you're, if you were per se that gang member, then, and you're operating where you know you don't want people to know you're a gang member and you have your tattoo here, then you roll your shirt sleeve up. This long sleeve shirt allows you to roll your shirt back down and become anybody you want to be. You don't, you're not a gang member anymore because nobody sees your gang tattoos. Okay. So that's uh that's some really in-depth stuff that you guys probably never would have thought of, but it affects everybody every day. And gray man versus hard target. I got a video up on that. Well, it, depending on the area that you're in, if there's no threat of violence, then leave your sleeves rolled down because your tattoos are going to scare people possibly, or your tattoos are going to have people thinking, oh, you know, this guy, whatever, whatever. Depends. Well, if I'm in an area where there is a possible threat of violence and I, and I'm, you know, Hey, I don't really want to have to get into an altercation today. What can I do to, to make myself look a little bit harder of a target? Roll my sleeves up like this instead of having a button up shirt and looking all fancy. Oh, well, I'm just going to roll my sleeve up a little bit. And that small change is now a drastic effect of me being less likely to get robbed because now I look a little bit tougher. All right. We also talked about in the last video, make sure that you always are tougher than you look because the tougher that you make yourself look, the more force they're going to come at you with when they do try and rob you or kidnap you or kill you or whatever. Because if they think that you're very well prepared, they're going to come with everything they've got. So if you're not as well prepared as they think, you always have to be more well prepared because it's just going to be devastating for you if not. You guys saw that I switched the knife, all right, in this particular scenario. I had a, a an all metal knife in the beginning, which is great, Tradecraft Kank, designed specifically as well for Gray Man, but this knife has no metal in it whatsoever. This is the NPE Ghost Knife. And in speaking of the most gray, the most effective Gray Man gear, there's pretty much nowhere that I can't take this knife in the world. There's a pretty much anywhere you could tell me, I could find a way to get this knife in if I had to. So that being said, since there's no metal in it whatsoever, it's still harder and sharper than steel. Some of you guys have heard of like carbon fiber blades or G10 blades, all kinds of other stuff. They're complete bunk, okay? It's BS. This is harder and sharper than steel. It's not plastic. I could make a knife out of plastic or a toothbrush. Great, okay? Why not have the best? This is insanely sharp, insanely tough. All right, it'll stab through just about any kind of amount of clothing and all the way through bone, flesh, everything. The only downside is it's susceptible to break under torque, but it's a non-permissive environment knife. And we're talking about if it's breaking, it's going to break after it's already gone in a couple times and done the job. Even more so, I could stick it in with a snap of the wrist, break it off in place and ensure that it stays where it wanted it to go in a case that that was something I wanted to do. Uh, really briefly, we'll talk about one of the other reasons of neck carry is that it's the most gray as well. It's the most gray friendly. All right. Something around my neck. It's great. It's great to have something around my neck like that. We've got here the traveler's money belt, which is actually an incredible, incredibly advantageous gray man item because this allows you to have anything you can stuff in here. I've got a piece of plastic in here now just to show about the size. Okay. I've got pretty, here's a credit card. So that's how much you can fit in there. You can fit a bunch of stuff in there, several passports, $10,000, whatever you want to put in there. I usually carry, you know, about nine grand in passports when I'm traveling in between countries and the airports and stuff like that, uh, in here, because you're not supposed to carry more than 10,000. And because the, when I do get to that country, what I'll do is I'll wear it outside of my clothing. And then when I get to a country, if it's very dangerous, I'll tuck this inside of my clothing. 
And then it's, it can even pass pat downs because it fits the pelvic region. It's a plastic zipper, so it can go through metal detectors. There's a little bit of zinc in here, but it'll go through most metal detectors without being uh, really setting anything off. And um, it can also be used even up to, because it's heavy duty nylon belt, double secure with a loop here and Velcro, that it can even be used to carry heavy items like a pistol or anything like that. I discussed more of why I like this particular pistol in the first video in this new series. So be sure to check that out. We talked about firearms in that video. And so I'm not gonna go through really a bunch on firearms. I will say that this SciTac holster is very, it's very adaptable. It's very similar to a lot of my knives. It has the, the clip you just slip into your pants. It does pretty good. It's not my favorite holster. Not incredibly comfortable, but for an appendix and for as, as easy as it is to use, it's, it's pretty great holster. And for the price, SciTac has good stuff. They sent me a bunch of stuff and it's all Chinese made, but I, I really I haven't been able to complain about anything they sent me. It's, uh, it's pretty high-end Chinese stuff. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't like to support China, but they are capable of producing some very high quality stuff. And... Uh, when you hear Chinese quality, it, it, to me, China is capable of producing much higher quality than the United States is capable of producing anymore because U.S. quality has just really fallen off, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't so. And, uh, and the Chinese are known for, for being con artists and, and making a bunch of crap and selling it as good stuff, but they have total capability to make good stuff as well. Let's discuss here the, the wallet really quickly. This is just uh, the wallet I carry. This is the, the Bone Tactical Minimalist wallet. It just allows you to have a bunch of cards, really as many cards as you want. And that's something really important because, you know, I have in here various IDs from various countries, various uh, permissions to, to transport arms. And so you could be expanding or much less. Of course, you want to probably get rid of all of your stuff from your old identity if you're changing identities, but it's just just a really cool adaptable wallet, really light aluminum. This one's old and beat up. I've had this for years. Also with this, what I will say about both of these, this I've had for almost a decade. It's one of the original prototyping models. So one thing about gear is get good gear because you'll have it forever. This, these, these Traveler's Money belts I make are just handmade, absolutely amazing, tough. There's nothing on the market like it. There's, tra there's Traveler's Money belts, everybody makes them, but nobody makes them to this level of quality or purpose built for gray man theory type stuff. The wallet as well, it's just, it's cheap and good quality. All beat up, but I've been using it forever and still holding strong. The keychain that I had in this video, most of you guys can tell what this keychain can be used for. I've got all kinds of levels of these. This may not be the most gray man friendly keychain, but it can be very easily pulled off and used as a force multiplier. It's got the screwdriver in the back and can be used to, you know, loosen bolts, all that kind of stuff, multi-tool. Like I say, it is not the most innocent looking, but I've got a full lineup of these. There are some of these that are definitely more passable for gray man theory. This just happens to be my favorite. The hat, uh, you guys saw that I shaved my head. That was just a change of appearance. Hat and sunglasses, you don't wanna to go too crazy. Everybody goes crazy with these disguises, but I look completely different now with short hair than I did with long hair. And then, but I do, um, you will see in this video at some point, probably at the end of the video, or you may have already seen it, walking around. And then episode three of this series is literally gonna be people's reactions to me. It's really cool in a very dangerous, very crowded area. I'm gonna walk through with two different outfits and the reaction is night and day different with the two different outfits. And I'm gonna discuss that and talk further about the theory behind that. But what one of the outfits you'll see me walking through is this outfit right here. And what I did was I put this hat on and then I put these sunglasses on. And one of the reasons I did that is because I feel like I was a little bit too hard target with the tattoos showing for the, for the particular situation. I was drawing attention and I didn't want to draw too much attention in that particular case. I might want to draw attention, but how easy is it again to roll my sleeves up and take the hat and sunglasses off if I feel like 
that I wanna be a little bit more of a hard target. If I wanna be less of a hard target, I cover my tattoos, I put the hat and sunglasses on, and then now I look a little bit more, a little bit less threatening, all right? You see a bald guy with a beard, big, tattooed, it could be threatening in certain circumstances. So in the gray man theory arena, I wanna have the ability to change others' perception of myself. And if I wanna be right now a person that is less threatening in appearance, then that's what I just became. The thing that I'll discuss in this video is a really cool tool that you can carry pretty much anywhere in the world, but can be absolutely incredibly devastating. All right, what I can do with this, any way I wanna use it, but it's a bracelet, all right? So you just wrap it around your wrist like so and clasp the bracelet here. It's got a little lobster clasp on there and it's just a bracelet. Kevlar cordage and mahogany, I make these and, uh, and I sell them at, at my website, bonetactical.com. The shoes, okay, everything's so important. The best I've found for a variety of reasons, things that you wanna look for are, you wanna look for performance, you wanna look for looks, and you wanna look for comfort, okay? These have the performance and the comfort in spades, they're ASICs and they make it all, they're, most of their shoes are just ridiculous looking and they won't blend with a good outfit. They can't, you can't, they won't allow you to, to you know, go from the gym to the, these can, are you know, pretty much a gym or running shoe. Most of their crazy colors won't allow you to really go to a dinner or something like that. One advantage I have here in Central America is that a nice all black pair like this is high end. So I could go to a nice dinner or I could go all the way down to go, you know, go work out with gym clothes. So that, that, that's what I recommend. Definitely look into something that can fit the perception of what you want, but also think on comfort. And if I have to do a lot of walking, comfort and performance of the shoe. It's a high performance shoe. It's a very comfortable shoe. That's very important as well. You're going to want to have some gear because we talked about miles. All right. The ultimate gray man backpack is the gray man backpack. All right. This is the gray man operations pack from bone tactical specifically designed and built for gray man operations. Now what you want to have in your backpack is going to be this stuff on the table, right? You can have this bag ready for when you need to go gray for if everybody says bug out bag, but what they don't have is this stuff. Nobody has any of this stuff in their bug out bag, the gray man theory preparedness stuff, just sunglasses with no lenses, okay? Or sunglasses with uh, normal looking glasses that don't look like sunglasses, sunglasses with clear lenses, okay? Glasses with clear lenses. The backpack can go anywhere from your office. You can take it to your office every day and nobody's gonna think that it's a bug out bag. That's what you want. You don't want a molly covered backpack, guys, because everybody's gonna know what it is. Everybody's gonna think you're military. There's gonna there's times where, I, where I'm traveling where if I have a multicam or molly covered backpack, I could be arrested and interrogated because people are gonna think possibly that I'm a spy or something like that. There's times when I'm allegedly doing corporate espionage, let's say. And in those cases, I can't have anything that makes me look like a military or spy or anything. Let's talk about what's in this bag. That's the real cool thing. Okay. So everything on this table is what you're gonna to wanna to load into this bag. But this is the stuff that if you buy it as the ultimate survival bug out bag, all this comes with it. You want light sources at night, but you wanna keep your hands free and you wanna have a red light source at night. Why? Because the red light source keeps your night vision and it doesn't ruin your night vision. So we've got all of you covered with the headlamp. You wanna be able to purify water, but you wanna be able to do it quickly on the go without having to stop and take a lot of time. If you're moving and shaking, if you're running from something or someone, or if you're trying to put miles between you and the people who know you, like we talked about. Gray man theory, okay? This is the ultimate tool for that water filter survival straw. It's got a little straw comes with a straw. I pulled this one apart already, but it comes with a straw. You pull the top off and you just stick it in any, any body of water. If it's black, it doesn't matter. And just drink when you're ready to drink for personal hygiene. And also for, if you get cut or anything like that, prevent infections, 
they come with wipes, okay? Very important as well. Speaking of medical, it comes with a first aid kit. Obviously, super important that you have a first aid kit. This is a basic first aid kit. There's plenty of extra room in the pack for you to put in your personal first aid stuff that applies to you, okay? This is the basics. If you have medications or special needs, then you put that stuff in there because that's why it's a big bag with plenty of room. Food, you want dehydrated food that's lightweight, but ready to go. You don't wanna to have to stop and start a fire to cook your food. This, I found these in Germany when I did some time over in Germany, literally did some time and spent some time. Some of their special operations guys are currently carrying these and I loved them. They put me onto them and, and they're just great. It's really cool stuff. And uh, these are what I'm selling with the bags as well. And, and they're awesome. You just, you don't even have to stop on the run. You rip one open full of calories. I've got uh, high energy ones. I've got multivitamin ones. You can tweak, tweak them to your needs. They're available for sale on the website as well separately. The cordage is absolutely essential. We just put your standard 550 paracord because it's the best cordage, okay? Comes with a knife. If you wanna switch up the blades, you want a multi-use knife. This is the ultimate multi-use knife. Left-handed, right-handed, any kind of way you wanna grab it, reverse grip, and it's just time proven killing tool as well as far as uh you know this what was used for how many years the stiletto style blade world war ii made it absolutely famous both sides the germans and the brits both had them and the u.s was using the brits version so everybody loved those and they're just they're just absolutely great for for end of the world type stuff don't ever underestimate the utility of a tool like this this is metal and it's just for eating it's a lifesaver if you know, have your utensils and stuff, but it can be used for absolutely anything. Opening can, opening bottles, has a little saw on there, fork, everything. Just super usable, all right? And and when, when there's not, when you don't have stuff, having something like this can be really usable. This is the straw I was talking about for the water bottle. A pair of gloves, you're, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna, you're gonna be doing a lot more physical labor. When you're putting miles on, when you're changing the person, you might've had a desk job, now you're doing physical labor, all right? You're not gonna be used to it. Your hands aren't used to it. Your feet aren't used to doing all that walking. How do you prevent blisters? Blister plasters for your feet because now you're putting miles, you're doing a lot more walking. Gloves for your hands, okay? This is all thought out, guys. This is, this is for coming from somebody who's been there and done that and survived on the run. And I'm, I've armed this bag ready to buy for less than $300, which is incredible because if you were to buy all this stuff yourself, it'd cost you 500 bucks easy. All right, the bag included and all of this stuff is on less than 300 bucks at bonetactical.com. I can't say that it will be like that for very long because since I bought this, I got lucky and bought this stuff before the pandemic or during the pandemic and I bought it in really huge quantities so I can pass that savings on to you guys. But when it's gone, I won't be able to replace this because this stuff now, really now it would cost you about a thousand dollars because at the time of filming this, Prices are going up every day. For everybody's blaming it on the Russian and Ukraine conflict. A lot going on in the world, and it's a terrible thing that's going on there, of course. But I think that there may be something else going on as far as to as far as why the media is pushing all of our attention at that. Comment below if you think if you agree with me on that. Uh, shelter, way to generate body heat, and a signal device all in one. Okay, mylar tube tent can be, if you're somewhere cold, can save your life. If you get wet, can save your life. If you're lost and you need to send a signal, it's bright orange, so it can save your life. Fire starter, there's two fire starters in here, three saws, measuring device, two can openers, compass, there's three compasses in here, all right? All of this stuff. So there's a, there's a map compass. And this still has the protective everything on it in this particular one, but just military grade map compass. So there's three compasses in here. This is the third compass here, paracord bracelet, uh, the third saw, okay? There's a fire starter here as well. This, these two strikers can, this is the second fire starter and a survival whistle and some extra cordage, all that kind of stuff. This bottle can be used to purify water since it's metal, you can put water in there and heat it up. I think that's pretty much everything that comes in the bag. The full list is on the website of what we're currently shipping. So check out the Ultimate Wilderness Survival Bag and then the is with all of the stuff. And then the bag by itself is just the Gray Man Operations Pack. It's a hundred bucks for the bag by itself or 300 bucks for everything you see here. 
And then this is it guys. You put this stuff here on this table in one of these bags and you've got yourself automatically being the most prepared person for anything that happens. Keep it in your vehicle, keep it with you where you go. Nobody's gonna know it's a bug out bag because it's so unassuming and you're as, as good as it gets, as prepared as it gets. You add in your extra stuff that you need specifically for you and you study these videos and learn how to use this stuff and you'll be way ahead of the game. Thanks for watching, Bone Out.